Good evening. Uh, Lost and Found excerpts. His whole life he had searched for this thing, home, a place where he might be able to lay his burdens down. He was heavy at a young age. It was as if he came out of the womb carrying a grief much larger than his baby child body should have been able to hold. Perhaps it was the womb of the mother trauma or maybe it was the seed of the father's sorrows inherited. Maybe it was the little black girl he'd grow into and out of. The question of home led him to a place called lost and looking. In his home, he learned to lock the doors. He learned to hide the things he cared about most. Nothing was safe there. Home, home didn't mean safe, it meant home. It meant warm heaters blasting. It meant the scent of menthol cigarette smoke waking him up early morning as mom sat on the toilet contemplating another day. When mom was little, she dreamed of always living on this block. He wonders now if mom wishes she would have dreamed a little bit further than a few blocks away from where she was raised, which was just across the street from the projects, but not the projects. They were never that. Close, but not that. Touching, but not. They never took government handouts. They had boots and straps and religion. They were always better than that. Next door, cheese and stamps. They didn't beg, they worked. Mom worked, still working, still living, waking up morning, smoking and sitting on toilets, taking baths because the shower don't work no more. Piles and piles of clothes and shoes and Avon boxes and magazines and tapes of soaps and stuff and stuff moms collected, programs from retirement parties, from church events, from weddings, pictures inside of frames have pictures taped on top. There is not enough room here, but mom still tries to keep it, collecting dust. He is not ashamed of home. He is angry sometimes because home there is so thick. Windows do not open. They break and crack from the weight of years. Mom holds on. He gets lost. Letters help to hold memories, memories of both the future and the past. I believe I fell in love with my father through my mother's voice. She read his letters to me before I could read. I remember being excited when he'd attach a drawing that some talented cellmate sketched. It was lovely to imagine me and mom and dad. It was lovely to imagine the dreams they both had, the love. They loved one another so deeply because they fell in love with each other's capacity to imagine something that neither of them actually experienced. Something that most people haven't actually experienced. An easy, breezy, heteronormative love where husbands work and mothers care for children and house. Even then, my parents' dreams weren't so purely normative, though. They were both rather queer figures. My mother, a sex-positive, scrabble-loving, Christian social worker and schizophrenic hoarder. My father, a musician, sometimes pimp, addict, church choir, and basement playing bass man. My mother met him in church. She describes him as an afro that fell with the wind. It never kept its shape, it was wild. My mother wanted a husband to be her helpmate. She, a black woman with two sons, divorced. She wanted to be loved and she wanted storybook romance and didn't she deserve that? I grew up in the church, Union Baptist. It was the church my mother grew up in. It was the church where my mother and father met. It was an old Baptist church where deacons prayed on their knees in front of cushioned pews. People caught the Holy Ghost. It was mostly boring, I remember, except for the music and those moments when people would pop off and scream and hoop and holler and cry. The old woman gathered round the person who caught the Holy Ghost and they'd hold a tight circle so that she or he, usually it was a woman, remained protected as they lost it. They were safe to lose it in this place. The old woman, church mothers in white, protected them. Maybe the one who caught the spirit lost her hat. Maybe she lost her wig. Her makeup dripped down her cheeks in a trail of tears. I remember my mother catching the Holy Ghost, jumping up and down and up and down and up and down. It was a sight to witness a sacred time. No one laughed and no one judged. The woman only came and held a tight circle around the one who was caught. I think about that moment of release now and how it was a tactic of survival in a place like East Oakland when you have a husband in prison, three children and a full-time job and still carry some traumas from the past that you were never allowed to talk about. 
I understand now why the elders say take it to Jesus because they can't and couldn't always hold us. They can't always keep us from the pain, but they could provide a temporary space for relief, for letting go, for being and going crazy, for screaming, for wailing, for crying out in pain and in gratitude. I think about that ring of old black women holding that circle of protection around a black woman who they couldn't always protect. But there was something about that freedom to be wild, to just lose it, and for the moment, losing it was all right. 